to begin. And after last night reading from the beginning of this chapter, just the very first hadith and the commentary of a Sheikh Rabir upon this chapter, having read the hadith of Abu Umama al Bahini, radiallahu anhu wa aradahu, where the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, as we mentioned, is collected by Ahmed in his Musnad, and by Tirmidhi in his Jami' and by Ibn Majah in his Sunan. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَا أَضَلَّ قَوْمٌ بَعْدَ هُدًا كَانُوا عَلَيْهِ إِلَّا أُوتُوا الْجَدَلِ And no people ever went astray after once being upon guidance except because of engaging in al-jadal, disputation. And we said that when a person engages in disputation, taking this as an approach in his religion, and he violates the methodology of a da'wah in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is mukhalafa manhajiyya, is an opposition to the methodology of the salaf. It is an opposition to the methodology of the Salaf. It is an, uh, it is an opposition to the usul of the Salaf in their fundamentals and belief and methodology. And so the affair is very important to understand that what is allowed in Islam is al-jidalu bilatihi ahsan is to dispute and to debate in a way that is better and best. What is the way that is better and best? First and foremost... What is meant by the way that is better and best are the two conditions for the validity of any action, which are al-ikhlas lil ma'bud wal mutaba'atu lil rasul. Following the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and being sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in disputing is that the reason that the person is trying to convince another person of the truth and they are doing it billatihi ahsan in a way that is best while having the knowledge to do so that the person in this attempt of theirs that they want the other person they want the truth to come from the mouth of the other person they want the other person to be guided and their intention is not al mughalaba their intention is not to defeat the other person in disputation. And from following the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam are the general manners and etiquettes of a da'wah. The most important of which are al-basira, having vision and insight and knowledge about what one is saying. The general etiquettes connected to this matter of a da'wah in Allah or you could say al-amru bin ma'roof wa nahi an al-munkar. Or you could say al-nasiha. These are three terms that are mutaqariba, that are very close in meaning to each other. Inviting to Allah, ordering with good and forbidding evil, and giving nasiha, giving sincere advice. That from the guidelines of that is what is mentioned by Shaykh al-Islam, Ibn al-Taymi rahimahullah ta'ala, in his very famous statement, he said, "In al-amir bil ma'roof wa nahi an al-munkar, yambari an yakun aliman bima yamru bi, aliman bima yanha anhu." That the person who orders the good and forbids the evil, then it is befitting upon him to be knowledgeable, meaning it is mandatory upon him to be knowledgeable about what he is ordering. Knowledgeable about what he is forbidding. He must know what he's talking about and have his proof and his evidence. Rafiqan fima ya'amuru bi, rafiqan fima yanha anhu. And he must be gentle in what he is ordering and gentle in what he is forbidding. Haliman fima ya'amuru bi, haliman fima yanha anhu. And he must be forbearing with the harms of people. Pretending what he is ordering and pretending what he is forbidding. These three things, Al-Ilmu, Wal-Rifqu, Wal-Hilmu, Knowledge, Gentleness, which has a deeper meaning that we'll come to see, and Al-Hilm, and Forbearance, they are the definition of Hikmah. 
They are the definition of hikmah. What is the easiest definition of hikmah in the Arabic language? Who knows? To what? I said the most simple. He gave me the more detailed one. But we'll get back to you. Putting things in their proper place. And more specifically, Akhuna, Fi'lu ma yanbari, doing what should be done. Kama yanbari, as it should be done. Fil waqt alladhi yanbari, at the time that it should be done. Doing what should be done, as it should be done, at the time that it should be done. So we have these three things. What should be done requires knowledge, knowing what should be done. How it should be done, it should be done with a rifq. It should be done with gentleness and with a word that is very similar to a rifq, which is a ta'anni, taking your time. You could say being deliberate, being deliberate, deliberance, being deliberate, taking your time, a ta'anni. Fil waqt alladhi yambari. At the time that it should be done. Meaning that a person la yasta'ajil athimar. He doesn't rush and hasten the fruits of his effort. And so this requires a sabr or you could say al hilm. Patience or you could say forbearance. Because at first he's going to meet opposition without a doubt. And then more and more people perhaps will give heed to what he has to say. And his awan, his supporters, they will increase in numbers in support of the truth. And more people will find that there is less of an imp- impediment and an obstacle and an obstruction between them and the truth. And the message will start to proceed a little smoother and a little quicker perhaps. Or perhaps no one will follow him. But in both situations, he needs patience. He said to Imam Malik, rahimahullah ta'ala, what is better for a person? Ibn Qayyim, he mentions this in his book, Al-Fawaid. What is better for a person? Mal afdal lil mar'a. What is al afdal lil mar'a? What is better for the person? An yumakkan aw yubtala. That he is given tamkeen, meaning that he is given a stable condition, strength, support, so on and so forth, or that he is tried and tested. Imam Malik, he said, لا يمكن حتى يبتلى That he will not have that, that situation until he is tested, until he is tried first. And so, it requires patience. So when he has these things, doing what should be done, which is knowledge, at the time that they, or as it should be done, which is with ta'anni, and he with Gentleness and ta'anni, ar-rifq. And you're doing things in a, a deliberate fashion, taking your time with things. At the time that it should be done. At the time that it should be done. Not, racing, not, 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 not rushing the fruits and so on and so forth. As the scholars, they say, that there's a principle in the religion, and fiqh, and generally, and a, a logical principle in the religion that says, مَنَ اسْتَعْجَلَ شَيْئًا قَبْلَ آوَانِهِ عُوْقِبَ بِحِرْمَانِهِ Whoever rushes a thing before its proper time will be deprived of its fruits. Whoever rushes a thing before its proper time will be deprived of its fruits. When a person goes outside of this methodology of calling to Allah bil hikmah wal mawidatul hasana wal jidab alati hiya ahsan with the with exiting from these things and entering into al-jidal arguing and disputation in a manner that is not ahsan where they don't really want the good for the person that they are advising and where they're having a mubadala between them and that person it's just a back and a forth and an exchange that has no fruit that the person who is arguing that they're not going to leave their position and have no interest in doing that and that's obvious and you're not flinching either then what is found in this chapter, and we'll try to cover some of it. And if you have the book, Al-Shari'a Ba'al-Ajuri, and the ability to read it, then we advise you to 
try to commit this information to memory, what is found here. It's very important, the principles, the meanings that are found here, a person should commit to memory. Not any verbatim, any, but the meanings. The, any, to paraphrase any these meanings and to commit them to memory and put them into implementation is very important. Muhammad ibn Hussein al-Ajuri, this is one of the chapters in the book where he has more commentary than many other chapters. So he comments and he says, لَمَّا سَمِعَ هَذَا أَهْلُ الْعِلْمِ مِنَ التَّابِعِينَ وَمَنْ بَعْدَهُمْ مِنْ أَئِمَّةِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ That when the people of knowledge from the successors to the companions, the tabi'een, and those who came after them from the imams of the Muslims, heard this, meaning heard the hadith of the Prophet wasallam, that no people go astray after once being upon guidance except because of engaging in disputation. لَمْ يُمَارُوا فِي الدِّينِ Then thereafter they did not dispute and debate about the deen. وَلَمْ يُجَادِلُوا وَحَذَّرُوا الْمُسْلِمِينَ الْمِرَاءَ وَالْجِدَالَ And they warned the Muslims from doing the same. From engaging in disputation. وَأَمَرُوهُمْ بِالْأَخْذِ بِالسُنَنِ And they simply instructed them to hold fast to the sunan. وَبِمَا كَانَ عَلَيْهِ الصَّحَابَةُ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ And to hold fast to what the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, may Allah be pleased with them, what they were upon. وَهَذَا تَرِيقُ أَهْلِ الْحَقُ مِمَنْ وَفَّقَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى As is mentioned by some of the scholars who wrote books about the adab of khilaf, of the etiquettes of differing and fiqh issues, mentioning the way of the Salaf al-Salih, that they had the most simple approach to the religion. They weren't people that used to sit around arguing about religious affairs. As was stated by Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he said, أُولَٰئِكَ أَصْحَابُ Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam these are the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi The most righteous of this nation in heart. In the deepest of them in knowledge. And those who burden themselves, overburden themselves the least. Meaning that they took a very simple and natural approach to the religion. Ash-Shatibi rahimullah ta'ala, he says in Al-Muwafaqat, that Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he explains in great detail, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent this religion to the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam amongst the Arab. Amongst the Arab, because the Arab were the simplest of people in their understandings, and their language is a very easy language, while being very eloquent, and they have a very easy approach to life in general, a very simple approach to life in general. Easy going people and dealing with other people, easy going in general. And because this was their nature, then them being an illiterate people and a very simple people, that they will be a hujja upon the rest of the nations. That if they could take this religion and establish this religion, then every other people that they could also take this religion and establish this religion. But this is where things went wrong. That when the Futuhat occurred, when the conquest occurred, and Islam spread from the east to the west, from the borders of China to the Atlantic Ocean, and the west of Africa, that it swallowed up with it many cultures of philosophy, and mysticism. These are the two veins of deviation throughout history, the scholars mention, that took people away from revealed religion into something else, philosophy and mysticism, both of which are irrational and are forms of pseudo-intellectualism. And so they took this approach and overcomplicated things. And they took another approach and they overcomplicated things. So the religion became a mystery or the religion became unknowable except by elites. You had to be an elite. You had to be somebody who was on a very high pedestal to understand the basics of creed according to the mutafalsifa from the Asha'ira and the Mu'tazila and the other deviant sects. 
And so when they went away from the simple approach of the companions of the Prophet wasallam and harafu, then they deviated. This religion is very easy to understand. And when you violate this general principle that the deen is yusr, that the religion is easy, وَلَا يَشَادَ الدِّينَ أَحَدٌ إِلَّا غَلَبًا No one overcomplicates a religion except that he will be overwhelmed by his behavior, by his approach to his religion. And no people ever do this except that they are destroyed. هَلَكَ الْمُتَنَاتِعُونَ so when the companions of the Prophet, or the tabi'een, the students of the companions of the Prophet wasallam, heard the likes of these ahadith, and the likes of these warnings that are in the book of Allah wa ta'ala, then they simply ordered those who came after them to hold fast to the sunan. وَبِمَا كَانَ عَلَيْهِ الصَّحَابَةُ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ And to hold fast to what the companions have been upon. وَهَذَا تَرِيقُ أَهْلِ الْحَقِّ مِمَّنْ وَفَقَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى And this is the way of the people of truth that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guided. وَسَنَذْكُرُ عَنْهُمْ مَا دَلَّ عَلَى مَا قُلْنَا إِن شَاءَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى And we are going to mention about them that which will demonstrate what we have just previously asserted and mentioned. إِن شَاءَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى He says, he mentions the first narration from the great scholar, the faqih, al-tabi'i, al-basri, from the imams of the scholars of Basra, who was Muslim ibn Yasar. Muslim ibn Yasar, who was from al-tabaqat al-wusta, min al-tabi'in, from the intermediate uh, generation of the tabi'in, meaning those that met a good number of the companions of the Prophet wasallam, but did, did not meet some of the outer companions. And you have the latter tabi'een who met many of the younger uh, companions. And he, Muslim ibn Yasar, he was from the middle. He had met a great number of the companions of the Prophet wasallam, that he said, or أَنَّهُ كَانَ يَقُولُ that he used to say. Meaning that it's not something that he said once, but it was something that he would remind the people of continuously. أَنَّهُ كَانَ يَقُولُ That he used to say That he used to say إِيَّاكُمْ وَالْمِرَاءَ فَإِنَّهَا سَعَةُ جَهْلِ الْعَالِمِ وَبِهَا يَبْتَغِ الشَّيْطَانُ زَلَّتَهُ It's a very important statement. I warn you from disputation because disputation is a span of time. It accounts for a span of time, a sa'a, jahl al alim, where a learned person, a scholar, behaves ignorantly. When a person gets into a disputation and argument, their blood starts flowing, their heart starts pumping, they're more emotional and less rational. فَإِنَّهَا سَعَةُ فَإِنَّهُ فَإِنَّهَا سَعَةُ جَهْلِ الْعَالِمِ فَكَيْفَ بِالْجَاهِلِ Because when one argues, then argumentation is a period of time. It is the moment where a scholar behaves ignorantly. So what about an ignorant person? What about an ignorant person? فَإِنَّهَا سَعَةُ Jahl al-alim is a time that makes a learned person, a scholar, behave ignorantly. Wabiha ya b'tari shaytanu zalata, and by it the shaytan is searching for an opportunity to make the scholar slip. According to the notoriety of the scholar and the scope of his influence and how wide his influence stretches will be the extent of the damage that is caused by that. As the scholars, they said, إِذَا زَلَّ عَالِمٌ زَلَّ الْعَالَمُ إِذَا زَلَّ عَالِمٌ زَلَّ الْعَالَمُ That when a scholar slips, an alim slips, then the alam, with the fata and the lam, the world slips with him. When a scholar slips, then the world slips with him. 
methodology in da'wah. Alaysa kathanik. So when the scholar goes away from the proper method of dealing with things, the proper method of solving problems, the proper method of the proper methodology of a da'wah, then the whole world can slip with him. Nas'alullah salamata wal afiyah. He says, likewise, he reports after bringing two chains of narration for that last statement that are both authentic. He brings a statement likewise from Ayyub as sikhtiyani who said that Abu Qilaba was another great imam around the same time as, as Muslim ibn Yasar, or at the same time as Muslim ibn Yasar in the same city in Basra. Abu Qilaba, from the great scholars of Basra, that he used to say, meaning it was something that he would say and remind the people of consistently and regularly. لا تجالس أهل الأهوى Do not sit with, associate with, be in the company of, socialize with أهل الأهوى The people of الأهوى, of الحوى The people who take a whimsical approach to their religion, following their desires. Do not sit with أهل الأهوى ولا تجادلوهم And do not debate with them. Do you know how to avoid debating with the people of innovation? Stay away from them. Stay away from them on Twitter. Stay away from them uh, in, in actual reality outside of virtual reality. Right? Stay away from them. And this is a point that we hope to come to in the time that we have. That the only way that you can argue with the people of innovation... And arguing about the religion isn't restricted to the people of innovation, but it is mainly applicable to the people of innovation. That the only way that you can actually fall into that is by being around them. It's by being around them. So there are many things that are involved. Each and every last one of them are an enormous, wide avenue and gateway to innovation and misguidance that are connected to arguing and that are precursors and prerequisites for disputing with the people of innovation and disputing with people who are upon their hawa, upon their whims and their desires. Abu Qilabi, he said, do not sit with them, associate with them, uh, socialize with them, so on and so forth, and don't argue with them. فَإِنِّي لَا آمَنُوا فَإِنِّي لَا آمَنُوا and يَغْمِسُوكُمْ فِي الضَّلَالَ Because I don't feel safe for you. And يَغْمِسُوكُمْ فِي الضَّلَالَ I fear for you that they are going to drown you in their misguidance. They are going to submerge you in misguidance. أَوْ يُلْبِسُوا عَلَيْكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ بَعْضَ مَا لُبِّسَ عَلَيْهِمْ Or you can say يُلَبِّسُوا عَلَيْكُمْ أَوْ يُلْبِسُوا عَلَيْكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ or they will confuse you about the religion in a manner that they have been confused about the religion. So these are one of two outcomes. Either you will be submerged, drowned in their misguidance, completely become one of them. Or the least case, they're going to throw some shubha in your heart that you're not going to have an answer for. This is one of the ways the scholars explain that innovation occurred, that people who were upon the truth sat to argue with the people of innovation, and they presented doubts that they didn't have answers for. And they didn't want the ignominy and the embarrassment and humiliation of not having an answer for falsehood, and so they just made something up on the spot. So what makes you different? You're a sahib al-hawa at that moment. If you have to make something up and you don't know and you don't have the humility to say, I don't know, just like you didn't have the humility to understand that you shouldn't be in the situation to begin with. And you just come up with something and spew it out the side of your mouth and out the side of your neck and just pull something out of your jabe out of your pocket. 
and come out of left field with something that you just made up at the moment, what makes you different than the person of bid'ah? That's exactly how he got to where he's at, right? Isn't that how he got to his point? Shaitan is very clever. Shaitan has been at it for a very long period of time. Entire nations, Banu Israel, the Nasara, the Yahud, entire nations have been set astray by the shaitan throughout generations. He is an expert at division and chaos and divisiveness. And he got you exactly where he wants you. I ask Allah wa ta'ala to protect us from his maka'id, protect us from his machinations and plots. He brings another narration. Each of these narrations are extremely important. From Muawiyah ibn Qurra, who was also a scholar from Basra in the time of the Tabi'een. Muawiyah Abu Iyas, Muawiyah ibn Qurra, Al Muzani, Al Basari. He was one who said, and this is not his narration that Ibn uh, Al Ajuri mentions. He said, أَدْرَكْتُ سَبْعِينَ مِنَ الصَّحَابَ لَوْ خَرَجُوا, لو خرجوا فِيكُمُ الْيَوْمُ مَا عَرَفُوا شَيْئًا مَا مِمَّا أَنْتُمْ فِيهِ إِلَّا الْآذَانِ I met 70 companions of the Prophet ﷺ. And if they, if any one of these 70 companions I met was to be present amongst you today, he wouldn't recognize anything of your practice of Islam except for the adhan. And so when we hear their hirs, their diligence in protecting the religion from being changed, and we know that this is the thing that caused the sunnah to be abandoned the most, al-jidal wal-mira'u wal-khusumatu fi deen Isn't that what the book Usul al-Sunnah starts with? Isn't that what Sharh al-Sunnah of al Bahari starts with? Holding fast to the sunnah, abandoning innovation. وَالْتَرْكُ الْخُصُمَاتُ وَالْجِدَالِ فِي الدِّينِ And leaving off arguing and disputing about the religion. That's the level of the importance of this principle. Right after holding fast to kitab and sunnah, the scholars in these dawaween and these enormous voluminous books with chains of narrations authentically to the companions of the Prophet ﷺ are demonstrating over and over and over and over again. Mu'awiyah ibn Qurra He said Al-khusumatu fi deen Tuhbitu al-amal That disputations about the religion Invalidate a person's actions Disputations about the religion Arguments about the religion Invalidate people's actions Why? It is su al-khuluq Ma'Allah it is having bad character with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is having a bad, bad dealings with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's how you treat Allah's religion, that you sit around and argue with it, like you argue about which sports team is better. You sit around and argue about Allah's religion like that. Some of the imams of the sound, if they saw a man walking and airing a hadith, they would seek from the governor of the town to put him on house arrest for disrespecting the hadith by walking down the street talking about hadith. Today it would be a fadila if you saw people walking down the street talking about hadith. You'd be like, mashallah, the sunnah is spreading. Right? Are you going to sit around and argue about the religion? How disrespectful. He said, so argument, arguments and disputations about the religion invalidate people's actions. Imam Ahmad rahimullah ta'ala as a side note Ibn Ubatta just as Al-Ajuri is doing here using these things to remind the generations that came after of the importance of and the methodology of safeguarding our religion. Al-Imam Ahmad rahimullah ta'ala likewise he used the statements of the Salaf in the same way in his time. Ibn Ubatta rahimullah ta'ala reports of this chain of narration so Abu al-Harith, who said, سَأَلْتُ Abu Abdullah, فَقُلْتُ One time I asked Abu Abdullah Ahmed ibn Hanbal, إِنَّ هَا هُنَا رَجُلًا يُنَاذِرُ الْجَهْمِيَ That there is a man in our place, in our location, who disputes with the Jahmiyyah, 
وَيُبَيِّنُوا خَطَأَهُمْ And he clarifies their errors to them. وَيُدَقِّقُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَسَائِلِ And he gets real deep and intricate in discussing issues with them. فَمَا تَرَى What do you think about this? Imam Ahmad, he said, لَسْتُ أَرَى الْكَلَامَ فِي شَيْءٍ مِنْ هَذِهِ الْأَهْوَى I don't see that it is correct or permissible to engage in kalam, in rhetoric about any of these ahwa, any of these whimsical innovations and innovative belief systems. Wala ara li ahadin an And I don't see that it is appropriate or permissible for anyone to debate with them. Alaysa qala Mu'awiyah ibn Qurra. Didn't Mu'awiyah ibn Qurra, he said, say, الْخُصُومَةُ تُحْبِتُ الْعَمَالِ وَالْكَلَامُ الرَّدِي لَا يَدْعُوا إِلَى خَيْرٍ لَا يُفْلِحُ صَاحِبُ كَلَامِ Didn't Mu'awi ibn Qurra say that disputing invalidates actions? Ibn Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal, he said in speaking with destructive speech never leads to any good and the person who engages in rhetoric and disputation will never be successful. تَجَنَّبُوا أَصْحَابَ الْجِدَالِ وَالْكَلَامِ So therefore, stay away from those people who argue and take this approach to their religion. Stay away from those people who say that they're upon the sunnah and they do this. It's way past that now. We're way past that point. We're way past that point. As we mentioned yesterday, that now people have invented principles to defend the innovators and wage war against the people of Sunnah. They're not refuting the innovators, sitting with them, going back and forth, point by point. You hear my side, I hear your side. That was a thing of the past. Now it's reached a whole different level. Now they're making principles to say that the innovators are from Ahl Sunnah. And that those who say otherwise and oppose them and refute them for for spreading that falsehood, that they are the people of innovation. That the people of sunnah have left the sunnah for adhering to the sunnah. (laughs) Hasbunallah wa ni'ma al-wakil. Alallahi tawakkalna. Likewise, he brings the statement of Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, al-Ajuri, in the 116th narration. He brings a statement of Umar ibn Abdul Aziz who said, Man ja'ala deenahu gharadan lil khusumat akhtar tanakkul. That whoever makes his religion an object of disputation is going to have a lot of tanakkul. He's going to switch from one position to another, to another, to another, to another. He's going to change his religion a lot. His religion is going to change frequently. Important. Umar ibn Abdul Aziz was the first person that they say if we were to choose a person, ala ra'asi kulli mi'a, at the head of every 100 years who was a mujadid of Islam, they say at the, fir- at the end of the first 100 years it would be Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. At the end of the second 100 years it would have been Al Imam Shafi'i. Right? Umar ibn Abdul Aziz here trying to safeguard the religion from being changed and trying to renew what had been lost from the religion, giving this advice that whoever opens up his religion and makes his religion a target that is open to khusuma, to disputation, something that is open to arguing about, and he's going to change and flip-flop a lot pertaining his religion. He's going to be imbalanced and unstable. Imam Malik rahimullah ta'ala in the, vex, in the very next narration he did what Imam Ahmed did. Right? What Imam Ahmed would do a generation later. And he used the statement just like Imam Ahmed used the statement of Mu'awi ibn Qurra. Imam Malik in this ve- next narration in 117, narration 117 in the book Al- Al-Sharia, Al-Ajuri mentions Imam Malik did the same thing. Ma'an ibn Isa reported saying in Saraf Malik ibn Anas yawman min al-masjid one day Anas ibn Malik was leaving from the masjid wa huwa muttakiyun ala yadayhi 
And he was leaning against my hand, meaning that I was directing Imam Malik, right? That he was leaning against me. He was leaning against me. And a man approached him whose name was Abu Jawairiya, who had been accused of being a murji, a person who said that actions don't harm, uh, sins don't harm a person's iman, and actions are not a part of iman, and iman doesn't increase and decrease, and these sorts of statements that are ridiculous. فَقَالَ يَا أَبَا عَبْدِ And he said to Imam Malik, O oh, Abba Abdullah, isma, isma minni shay'an ukalimuka bihi wa uhajuka wa ukhbiruka bi ra'i. He said, I want you to listen to something I had to say. I want to discuss something with you and argue with, debate with you about something and inform you of my opinion, my viewpoint. Today they say everybody has a right to their opinion. No, they don't. Right? You also have a right to go right to hell. Right? Yeah, you know, the, 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 the freedom of speech is the freedom to speak the truth. Otherwise, people are responsible for what they say. And to be held accountable for what they say in every way. He said, let me talk to you about something and let me give you my opinion. Another occasion is similar to another narration. On a different occasion where Imam Malik was leaving a masjid. And a man started to ask Imam Malik about his opinion about different things. He said, Tarani akhruju min kanisa. He said, you see me leaving out of a church? I treat my religion like that. You want to know my opinion about affairs of religion? Meaning ask me about the sunnah. Ask me about the truth. Ask me about what is correct. Don't ask me about my opinion about anything. He said, let me give you my opinion. This man who was accused of irja, of being a murji, he said to Imam Ahmed. Imam Ahmed gave him a beautiful answer. He said, فَإِنْ غَلَبْتَنِي He said, what if you win? What if you overwhelm me and overcome me in your argument? He said, إِنْ غَلَبْتُكَ أَتَّبَعْتَنِي He said, if I win, then you follow me in my opinion. قَالَ فَإِنْ جَاءَ رَجُلٌ آخر فَكَلَّمَنَا فَغَلَبَنَا He said, well, if another man comes and he talks to us and he convinces us, what do we do then? قَالَ نَتَّبِعُهُ He said, then we'll follow him. Malik rahimullah ta'ala, he said, Ya Abdullah, O oh, slave of Allah, Ba'atha Allahu Azza wa Jalla Muhammadan sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bi deenin wahid. He said, Allah only sent Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with one religion. Wa araka tantakilu min deenin ila deenin. And I see you going from one religion to another. Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, he said. Imam Malik is saying, Umar ibn Abdul Aziz said, مَنْ جَعَلَ دِينَهُ غَرَضًا لِلْخُصُومَاتِ أَكْثَرَ تَنَقُّلُ He quoted Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. If you make your religion target to disputation, you're going to change a lot in your religion. Many, many narrations. From the Salaf al-Salih in this regard, one after another after another, each of them as important as the other. Each of them showing us something tremendous. In the short period of time that we have left, we want to mention some things. Imam Al Ajuri says, Man kana lahu ilmun wa aqal, famayaza jamia matakadama dhikri lahu, min awali had al kitab ila had al mawdir, alima ennohu muhtajun ila al amali bihi. Whoever has knowledge and intelligence and understands meaning what they know and is able to decipher between everything that we have just mentioned and put it in its proper context. From the beginning of this book about the importance of adhering to the sunnah and the jama'ah and adhering to the text and being united upon that and leaving off disputation about the religion, then he will know that it is all in need of being acted upon and implemented. فَإِنْ أَرَادَ اللَّهُ بِهِ خَيْرًا If Allah wants good for him, then the following things will happen. And the following things will happen. Here, Al-Ajuri is summarizing everything from the beginning of the book. And we're about probably a good 
hundred pages into the book at this point. Everything from the beginning of the book to here. Therefore, if Allah wants good for a person, what is he going what is going to happen with this person? First, Lazima Sunan Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He will find himself adhering to the sunan, to the ways, the beliefs, the practices, and commandments of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَمَا كَانَ عَلَيْهِ الصَّحَابَةُ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ And so with the companions of the Prophet, may Allah be pleased with them, were upon. وَمَنْ تَبِعَهُمْ بِإِحْسَانِ To the way of those who follow them in goodness. مِنْ أَئِمَةِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ فِي كُلِ عَصْرِ From the Imams of the Muslims in every time and every era who follow the companions in ihsan, in goodness. This is the first thing. Secondly, وَتَعَلَّمَ الْعِلْمَ لِنَفْسِهِ لِيَنْتَفِيَ عَنْهُ الْجَهْلُ And he will learn knowledge for his own benefit. He will learn knowledge for his own benefit in order to remove ignorance from himself. وَكَانَ مُرَادُهُ And his intention in doing that will be أَنْ يَتَعَلَّمُهُ لِلَّهِ تَعَالَى وَلَمْ يَكُنْ مُرَادُهُ أَنْ يَتَعَلَّمُهُ لِلْمِرَاءِ وَالْجِدَالِ وَالْخُصُمَاتِ وَلَا لِلْدُّنْيَا He will learn this religion for himself, to remove ignorance from himself, having the intention to learn it sincerely for Allah's sake. And not intending to learn this religion in, able to, in, in order to enable him to argue with people and debate with people and dispute with people. And not learning this religion for the sake of any dunya, of any wealth or status or anything of the sort. وَمَنْ كَانَ هَذَا مُرَادُهُ سَلِيمًا إِنْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى مِنَ الْأَهْوَاءِ وَالْبِدَعِ بَالضَّلَانَ Whoever makes this their intention, to learn this religion, to remove ignorance from themselves sincerely for Allah, and not to argue and dispute and debate with people. This comes in the hadith, the Prophet wasallam said, مَنْ تَعَلَّمَ الْعِلْمِ لِيُمَارِ بِهِ سُفَحَا وَلَا إِيش الحديث The beginning of the hadith لِيُبَاهِ بِهِ الْعُلَمَا وَلِيُمَارِ بِهِ سُفَحَا أَوْ لِيَحْتَزَّ تَحْتَزَّ بِهِ الْمَجَالِسْ فَالنَّارِ النَّارُ نسأل الله العافية Whoever learns this knowledge in order to compete with the scholars or to dispute with the ignorant, or to gain mastery over the gatherings and the hellfire, the hellfire. Allah protect us. And so a person learns this knowledge to protect himself. He is miskeen and vulnerable, and his brothers and sisters in Islam are miskeen and vulnerable. And they are surrounded by all sorts of things that threaten their religion. As Imam Ahmad, he said, الْعِلْمُ لَا يَعْدِلُهُ شَيْءِ إِذَا صَحَتْ نِيَتُهُ there's nothing comparable to knowledge if a person has a good intention. He said, وَمَا سُحَةُ نِيَّتِهِ What's a good intention pertaining knowledge? Imam Ahmad, he said, أَن تَنْوِي أَن تَرْفَعَ الْجَهْلَ عَنْ نَفْسِكَ وَعَنْ غَيْرِكَ Is that you intend to remove ignorance from yourself, from yourself and from others. From yourself and from others. And so this is a person's intention. He wants to remove ignorance from himself and ignorance from others. And he wants people to be right. And he wants the religion of Allah to spread. And he doesn't have worldly purposes. And he doesn't want to be able to just be over people and more intelligent than other people and be able to overwhelm them in disputation and argument. Whoever is like this, Salima insha'Allah ta'ala min al-ahwa'i wal bid'ah. That he holds fast to the sunnah what the companions were upon and the imams were upon and every time. And he learns this knowledge with the proper intention. And not to dispute and argue. And he will be protected insha'Allah ta'ala from deviant belief systems and innovation and misguidance. وَاتَّبَعَ مَا كَانَ عَلَيْهِ مَنْ تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ أَئِمَةَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ الَّذِينَ لَا يُسْتَوْحَشُ مِنْ ذِكْرِهِمْ And he will find himself following what those that preceded him from the imams of the Muslims were upon those people who you never feel uncomfortable mentioning. Those great scholars about whom Sufyan ibn Uyayna he said إِذَا ذُكِرَ الصَّالِحُونَ Tanziru rahma. Then when the righteous are mentioned, mercy descends from Allah. People that 
by hearing about how they were. Allah sends mercy down upon us. It's a mercy to know about their lives and to emulate them. وَسَأَرَ اللَّهَ تَعَالَ يُوَفِقَهُ لِذَلِكَ And furthermore, He constantly asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and pleads with Allah tabarak wa ta'ala to give Him tawfiq to do all of that. May Allah give us tawfiq. So there are a number of things that lead to this point where a person starts to dispute and starts to argue. The first of them, how much time do I have? Do I have any time? <laughs> the first of them, I'm about to hit the road. Inshallah. You know. So we'll try to finish these points, inshallah ta'ala, because they're extremely important and each of them are something that individually may save your life one day, may destroy you from may, may uh, save you from destroying your religion and from the tr- tricks of the shaitan. The first thing that leads to arguing and disputing is loving controversy. Just loving controversy. Some people love controversy. As our brother Abu Wais rahimullah ta'ala used to say in dealing with the problems of the community, may Allah give him the jannah. All the patience and all the abuse that he suffered in dealing with foolishness. You used to see it in his face. He used to look like he was about to vomit hearing some of the foolishness that was commonplace in some communities. And people's love of controversy and love of khilaf. And khilaf u sharr. Khilaf, differing is evil. Right? Differing is evil. Loving khilaf. Mahabbatun khilaf. is so destructive. It's a cultural toxin. Many people, they were raised by their parents in a household that is just full of controversy and arguing and disputing and their, and, and their neighborhoods were like that and so on and so forth. And you have to detox now, right? You have to detox, get it out of your system. It's bad for you. It's bad for your mind. It's bad for your deen. It's bad for your dunya. It's bad for you in every way. Loving controversy, loving differing. The great scholar Abu Sulaiman al Khatabi, rahimullah ta'ala, he wrote a book called Kitab al Uzla where he mentions something very important in this regard. He said, وَقَالَ بَعْضُهُمْ Some of the scholars in the past, they said, إِنَّ مِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يُولِعُ بِالْخِلَافِ أَبَدًا From the people are those who are obsessed and in love with always differing and being controversial. حَتَّى إِنَّهُ يَرَى أَنَّ أَفْضَلَ الْأُمُورِ أن لا يوافق أحدا ولا يجامعه على رأي ولا يواتيه على محبة to the point that they think that the most virtuous thing the thing that will give you the most merit the thing that will give you the best reputation is to never agree with anybody about anything and never have any real love for anyone ومن كان هذا من ع ومن كان هذا عادته فَإِنَّهُ لَا يُبُصِيرٌ حَقْ وَلَا يَنْصُرُهُ A person who is like that, that that is how they are, that is their ada, that's their culture and their tradition and their custom. What's going to happen to their deen? فَإِنَّهُ لَا يُبُصِيرٌ حَقْ He won't have the ability to see the truth. He won't be able to see the truth. وَلَا يَنْصُرُهُ Nor will he aid the truth and support it. وَلَا يَعْتَقِدُهُ دِينًا وَمَذْهَبًا and nor will he believe in it as his religion and his way and approach and methodology. But rather he has blind allegiance to his opinions. And he always wants to get revenge for himself if anyone goes against his opinions. And he is diligent in working to please himself. He's a narcissist. He just wants to be right. And if you oppose him, it's a narcissistic injury. He's been out of shape. He can't sleep. Right? He said, and he works diligently to please himself. This is kind of humorous what he's going to mention. Because some people are like this. حَتَّى إِنَّكَ لَوْ رُمْتَ أَن تَرْضَاهُ وَتَوَخَيْتَ أَن تُوَافِقَهُ عَلَى الرَّأِيِ الَّذِي يَدْعُوكَ إِلَيْهِ تَعَمَّدَ لِخِلَافِكَ فِيهِ He said to the point that if you were just to give up and try to please that person 
I say, look, I'm going to just agree with him just so he stops being bent out of shape. He will intentionally change his mind to keep opposing you. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. And he won't be pleased with that. Right? That's not enough. That's not enough. He wants you to be humiliated. Hata yantaqila ila naqidi qawlihi. Until he goes to the exact opposite of his statement, contradicting himself just to oppose you. فَإِنْ عُدْتَ فِي ذَانِكَ إِلَى وَفَاتِهِ عَادَ إِلَى خِلَافِكَ And if you were to change your mind to his next opinion, he would change his mind and he would do that till he died. Abu Sulaiman al-Khatabi, he said, فَمَنْ كَانَ بِهَذِهِ الْحَالِ فَعَلَيْكَ بِمُبَعَدَتِهِ وَنِفَارِ عَنْ قُرْبِهِ That goes without saying. He said, whoever is like that, stay, stay, stay very far away. And don't be close to a person who is like that. A person who what? Who loves to differ, who loves controversy. If you find people like that in your immediate social circle, change your social circle. If you find people like that are friends of yours and associates of yours, find new friends. The second and the third thing that lead to disputation and argumentation are summarized, and this is our concluding point, by the great Imam Ibn al-Batta al-Ukbari, rahimahullah ta'ala, in his book Al-Ibana. In his book Al-Ibana. And this is what he mentions right before he mentions the chapter of the dispraise and the prohibition of arguing and disputing about the religion. He said, I'lamu ikhwani. And these two things that he mentions... He brings lengthy, lengthy chapters. Each of the chapters having probably at least 70 or 80 narrations, if not closer to 100 for them. And lengthy explanation for many of the statements that are found in both of these chapters, explaining these two things that are connected to each other. That lead people to leaving Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. That chip away at the unity part of Ahlu Sunnati wal Jama'ah. Ahlu Sunnah wal Jama'ah requires unity. You can't have Ahlu Sunnah without Jama'ah, right? He says, Rahimullah Ta'ala, Alamu Ikhwani, know my brothers, and ni fakartu fi sabab alladhi akhraja aqwaman mina Sunnati wal Jama'ah. That I thought deeply and contemplated about the reason, a sabab, the reason. That removed people and exited people out of the sunnah and the jama'ah. And forced them into innovation and a reprehensible practice of religion. And open up the door of disaster upon their hearts. And that veiled the light of truth from their Vision. فَوَجَدْتُ ذَلِكَ مِنْ وَجْحَيْنِ And I found that that reason that caused everyone to leave the sunnah and the jama'ah goes back to two things. Kind of sort of important, right? It's extremely important. This great imam who wrote this lengthy, lengthy book full of the statements of the early scholars and the ahadith of the Nabi wasallam about aqeed and manhaj. He's telling you what causes people to leave Salafiyyah. So if you're sleeping, wake up. If you're drowsy, sprinkle a little water on your head. Right? Ahaduhuma. The first of these two things, Al-Bahthu wa tanqiru wa kathratu su'ali amma la ya'ni. وَلَا يَذُرُّ الْعَاقِلَ جَهْلُ وَلَا يَنْفَعُ الْمُؤْمِنَ فَهْمُ is digging too deep and unnecessarily researching into and asking too many questions about what does not pertain you, what does not benefit you. مِنْ حُسْنِ إِسْلَامَ الْمَرْئِ تَرْكُهُ مَا لَا يَعْنِيهِ and the good practice of a man's Islam is leaving off what doesn't concern him. This is the inverse meaning of the hadith of the Prophet 
المؤمن القوي خير وأحب إلى الله من المؤمن الضعيف وفي كل خير. The strong believer is better than the weak believer with Allah. And more love to Allah than the weak believer, both of them have goodness. What is the thing that separates the strong believer from the weak believer? The Prophet ﷺ said what? Ihris ala ma yanfa'uk. Be diligent in pursuing and doing what benefits you. As opposed to what? What doesn't benefit you. Be diligent in that which benefits you was sta'in billahi wa la ta'ajiz. And put your reliance upon Allah, ask Allah for His help. And do not be lazy. Al-ajiz here is al-kasal. Do not be lazy. That's what makes a person a strong believer. This is husnul islam According to how well he is practicing his religion, Ibn al-Rajah mentioned in Jami al-Ulum al-Hikam, is according to how well he is practicing his religion. Meeting this description, be, be diligent in what benefits you seek the assistance of Allah and don't be lazy. According to how much he is doing this, will be the qadr mudha'afatul thawab, the amalihi, will be how much he is rewarded for his actions between 10 and 760 and 700 fold, ila mudha'afa, to many times beyond that. This is husni islamihi. This is a person having a good practice of his deen. The opposite of that is his engaging in that ma la From the goodness of a man's Islam is the, from the goodness of a man's practice of his religion is leaving off what doesn't concern him. So being preoccupied with that which is not beneficial and that which does not immediately concern you and that which is not going to bring you closer to Allah and make you a better worshiper of Allah and more fearful of Allah and love Allah more and so on and so forth. I love the truth more and be more diligent in wanting what Allah wants for you. Then this is going to lead you closer and closer and closer to misguidance. To the point that he mentions this is the first of the two reasons. Asking too many questions and overcomplicating things. And delving into that which does not benefit. And that which will not harm you to remain ignorant of. وَلَا يَنْفَعُ الْمُؤْمِنَ فَحْمُ and does not benefit the believer to understand. Well, akhar, and the second of the two reasons, mujalasatu man la tu'manu fitnatuhu, wa tufsidu al-quluba suhbatuhu, wa tufsidu al-quluba suhbatuhu. The second reason is socializing with, sitting with, being in the company of people who you are not safe from their fitna. People whose fitna you are not safe from. And who being around them will destroy your heart and corrupt your heart. Then he mentions a chapter for each of these two things. And explains them in painstaking detail and follows them with what comes as a result of these two things. That by overcomplicating your religion as opposed to taking a simple approach and understanding of your religion. Seeking the knowledge for the sake of Allah, for the face of Allah. Not engaging in disputation, so on and so forth. And by being in the company of people who are like that, who are upon their hawa, who love controversy, and who love fitna, and so on and so forth, you're going to find yourself in that situation of al khusuma fi deen of finding yourself constantly debating and arguing about your religion, wasting your time, wasting your life, stuck on stupid, your life put on pause. As long as you're engaged in something that has nothing to do with you, la min qarib wa la min ba'id, has nothing to do with you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who يَسْتَمِعُونَ الْقَوْلَ فَيَتَّبِعُونَ أَحْسَنَ Who hear what they hear and follow the best of what they hear. إِنَّهُ سَمِيعٌ قَرِيبٌ مُجِيبٌ وَصَلَى اللَّهُ وَسَلَّمْ وَبَارَكَ عَلَى نَبِيَنَا مُحَمَّدْ وَعَلَى آلِهِ وَصَحْبِهِ وَسَلَّمْ أَسْتَوْدِعُكُمْ اللَّهُ leave you in the care of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I thank the imam of this masjid our dear brother Abdul Razak and I thank the administration of this masjid Ismail and Abdul Mateen and the other brothers may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase all of you in good Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this sitting hujjata lana la alayna these sittings of ours over this weekend a proof for us and not against us Hopefully we see each other in the near future and we encourage each other with the advices of our scholars 
throughout the years, tazawaru, and you visit each other, visit each other's communities, see the efforts of the sunnah in the various communities. Alhamdulillah, you're fortunate here, as the weather is warming up here on the east coast and the eastern seaboard, you have every 40 minutes, 50 minutes or hour, you have another community, in another masjid, you have seminars and conferences. You go to the rest of the country, it's like a drought throughout the year. Take advantage. Take advantage and benefit. Barakallahu fikum. And be appreciative of what you have. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala improve our condition and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us more grateful. Barakallahu fikum.